This is the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 26, on the 12th of September 2013, a feature on Asset Music Tech with founder Brian Zisk. And the DMT 1 to 1 this week is sponsored by media law firm Sheridan's at sheridans.co.uk. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT 1 to 1 show. This week it's great to have Brian Zisk on the show uh, from Asset Music Tech. So hi Brian, great to have you on. How's it going? Thrilled to be here. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about, of course, uh, the event that's happening on the 1st of October in San Francisco. But first of all, I want to ask you about, uh, you know, Asset Music Tech as an event. So sure. when did it start out and, and how, how did it come about? Well, we started a, a little over six years ago, I think, and uh, we're up to our 14th one. And it came about because, you know, I, I've been in this space doing startups and working with startups for, for so long at the convergence of Internet Music and Technology. And there was so much traveling and I got yeah. tired of... You know, I mean, you know, you're in England. You want to come to SF Music Tech and disrupt your whole life. So, you know, we were going to France and seeing folks at Meetem who, you know, from the Bay Area who we didn't see for the entire year before that since Meetem. And we were like, why do we need to keep traveling? And, you know, we had a, a, a newborn at the time and we brought her over there. And, you know, we, we'd come back at one in the morning kind of early for Meetem standards. And the babysitter would be like, oh, she is just waking up, you know, and we were just, we just, we were like, how about we do something in the Bay Area that yeah. really, because there's such a core of interesting people who care about moving this music technology space forward that, uh, you know, we really need to, because not everyone can spend, you know, the huge amounts of money to fly to Cannes and have a booth and to take, you know, a week and a half out after, you know, planning for six months. Let's do something a little more low key, San Francisco style, but right here, you, you know, where so much is happening. So, so we just did it, and you know, so many people came out really excited, and uh, it, it's just taken off. Yeah, and, and of course, everything has changed in the last six years when it comes to digital music. You know, we've seen so much yes. change. So many companies come and go, and so many companies become huge in the last five years, like uh, Spotify, right. for example, and Pandora sure. uh, grow so much, and. Uh, and so, uh, how has the startup scene uh, evolved uh, in San Francisco in particular? Are people still in, sure. interested in music? Uh, because, of course, the potential sure. upside is smaller than in other industries. <laughs> sure. Well, people love music and love being involved in music. And, and there has been kind of an aggregation. It's been really interesting because when we started, you know, it was, uh, you know, Pandora hadn't had their IPO. Spotify wasn't what it is now. I mean, you didn't have RDO. Uh, I mean, so much has happened. YouTube wasn't really monetizing for people i mean it, it's it's so much has happened that uh, you know it's interesting we do the show about every six months we did one about five months ago i think the next one will be in six to eight months um and so much happens between each show that there's always fresh things to cover so yeah. it's been really interesting for people you know like when we started uh, you know, I started in the space with the Greenwich Internet Radio, and then we started Future Music Coalition, and that was in the 90s, and it was really interesting because back then, you really couldn't get distribution. You know, the internet was really starting, but if you wanted to sell your CD, you had to be with a major to get in the stores. Yeah. And then there came, you know, the whole, uh, you know, Apple and iTunes and CD Baby and all the IOTAs and all those other folks, and people got the distribution, and then... But now it's really more like, okay, great, there's almost unlimited distribution. There's almost unlimited competition. How do you stand out, build a fan base, and make money? Because you can't really just leave it up to, okay, we're going to put our song on Spotify through an intermediary and see what happens. That doesn't get you anywhere. You've got the distribution, but if you can't get recognized or stand out you really have a tough time. And, you know, when, when, when the show was starting, you know, and uh, initially apps were coming out, you know, you'd have like, you, you know, Pandora and you'd have SoundHound. And these apps that got on it early are still some of the top grossing acts to this day. Yeah. If you're an app in this space and you're trying to get noticed, it's just as tough as being a, a musician because there's tens of thousands of these apps. And how do you rise above, you know, how many of these concert listing apps are there and you know, a bunch of them are doing really well and really large and a lot of them are shifting to try to be more about connecting friends and artists yeah. but if there's dozens and dozens of them you know there's really only going to be a couple of winners in the space so it's changed a lot and i can't wait to see you know what's new now everyone's gone away for the summer and there's 
other interesting things, you know, like wearable computing stuff. I'm seeing some great early Google Glass stuff. I'm seeing some of the Leap Motion. Finally, you know, some of the apps are really getting interesting. And there's more and more platforms, but how do you use it to stand out, whether as an artist or as a technology company in the space. Yeah, and uh, SF Music Tech has always uh, uh, brought in uh, artists and artist managers as well as uh, uh, just yes. uh, pure technology companies and music industry players. And so sure. uh, how have you seen the tech companies evolve in the, in the way that they uh, they relate to artists? So we're still seeing a lot of people say that uh, streaming services, for example, could do a lot more to help artists sure. uh, than just serving streams. And do right. you think that's going to be a big trend for SF Music Tech uh, in October? Sure. Well, I mean, there's definitely, uh, you know, the big companies like the, the RDOs and the Spotify's and the Pandora's where, you, you know, the rates are really important, no doubt. Um, but the artist also, in most cases, doesn't really deal with them directly. Yes, yeah. it's true. If you're Metallica, you go do a direct deal with Spotify. But in most cases, uh, you know, th there's, there's separation between, uh, you know, an artist trying to make a living and, you know, Pandora playing their streams, similar yeah. to like a regular radio station or similar to anything like this. So we are seeing a lot of other things like uh, Gigam, which is coming in from Turkey and they're fabulous. They're much more about, uh, you know, how do you have the artists connect with other musicians so they can kind of form bands and yeah. connect with managers and connect with gigs, um, you know, things such as that, the, 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 the ways to help you amplify what you're doing are really more and more important because, you know, everybody can get on iTunes, but how do you reach them? So, yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot more of these uh, different ways to help artists reach their, you know, Jack Conti with his Patreon. I mean, there's like so many different things. I know Bandpage is doing all sorts of great stuff yeah, with absolutely. experiences and, and, and beyond. And, you know, a lot of it is, you know, when, when I'm a fan of someone on, on Spotify, they don't get that much money, even if I listen to them all the time. So how do we find the ways where the true fans can help the artist make more money, even if, you know, when they listen to them on a streaming service, it's not, you know, that you know, it doesn't really connect directly compensate them very much at all. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another area that's going to be interesting, I think, to hear about uh, at Asa Music Tag is going to be curation as well. Uh, you yes. know, we're, we're hearing, uh, uh, of course, that uh, Daisy should launch by the end of the year if everything goes to plan. And uh, also we've had uh, uh, the news uh, last week that Ministry of Sound sued Spotify uh, for, uh, you know, a playlist, uh, intellectual property, right. which is essentially the intellectual property of a, of a curated playlist that they claim to be, uh, you know, a result of their expertise. And so, uh, you know, it creates an issue uh, right. when that's that, that I think is a pretty complicated uh, uh, situation and one that's yeah. very interesting. Um, Absolutely. And, and it, it is almost like, I mean, if you have these playlists that you release and then all of a sudden it's, it, it's a, it's a compilation, it, uh, you know, they may have more of, I don't want to say more of a case, because it really shouldn't be a case. It should just be that if, if, it, if it actually is the playlist from the album that Ministry of Sound released, that they control it as the album that it is. So running yeah. around it, it, it's an interesting situation, um, and I see why it would have fallen through the cracks and not have been that important for someone like Spotify to resolve, but very interesting for... for uh, Ministry of Sound to want to resolve because yeah. they're known for their compilations. I mean, it's same with you know some of these universal compilations. Yeah. You, you know, I don't think you could have a a playlist of uh, I forget their series. Uh, that's what you call now, music yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, now you know. So so uh, <laughs> whereas playlists shouldn't be copyrightable in most cases. When they really, uh, in this case, it, it's a very interesting. It's an interesting uh, point, yeah, and it's going to be interesting also because we we see you know uh, Daisy is going to invest so much money and a lot of the a lot of the streaming services really are investing quite a lot of money in, in curation and uh, create mm -hmm. generating uh, great playlists for the users to stick around and so sure. uh, you know whether somebody could just come and copy and paste that playlist into another service and <laughs> say it's so and so's playlist, right? It, exactly. it, it is actually it's more than just a base copyright claim and, and it'll be interesting well, I mean, we might see daisy's, some more of these coming up <laughs> it's gonna be daisy's, daisy's really interesting i mean i i'm not i don't know when they're launching or whatever i, I was hoping by sf music tech but i have no knowledge uh 
But uh, one interesting there, thing there is uh, Ian Rogers leads a bunch of people on this whole life challenge, and I just signed up for that. Uh, it started yesterday. So right. there's tons of stuff I'm not eating. We're all reporting online, and, and he's a great leader of people. So considering all the great folks that he's attracting to Daisy, uh, I'm optimistic that they're going to do something really interesting, but yeah. also that they will wait until they really have something interesting uh, before we're going to hear anything. Yeah, and, and some some smaller development uh, companies and development outfits are becoming more and more important to implementing uh, some of the most interesting marketing campaigns also by majors uh, uh, that we're seeing out there. So are, are, are you uh, anticipating uh, uh, you know, dev developers attending? Uh, do developers usually attend SF Music Tech? And uh, do you yeah, think I, we're going to see more of that? Sure, well, I mean, we're really strong on developers attending and on small yeah. shops, and that's really... You know, you have the, the majors and other big artists and all that stuff, and it's hard for them to sort through the hundreds of small companies that are coming at them. So by coming to the summit, which by seeing who we put on stage to demo, you know, and then we have our startup innovator showcase uh, yeah. where, you know, a bunch of folks are chosen. And then we have our elevator pitch sessions, which are great, where anyone can get up and for 30 seconds to a minute talk about what they're doing. So it's great to get like interesting people and investors and all that in the room. And then, you know, you hear from 60 to 100 startups of what they're yeah. working on, which is really great over time because, you know, by the third time you've seen someone pitch, maybe it's like their, their plan has changed, their partners have changed, you know, you really like someone, but you're like, oh, I don't quite believe that model. And then they team up with someone else who they met at the summit, you know, had a slightly better model or yeah. all of those introductions, you know, and then, and then, uh, there's also going to be, um, and I can announce it because it's, this is happening. This show will not air till next week. So it yeah. hasn't been announced yet, exactly. but <laughs> it will be announced by the time this goes, which is, uh, Pandora and, uh, Grace Note, um, and a couple other folks are doing a hella hack day, Oakland, uh, the, right. the, days right before SF Music Tech, and the winners are going to be chosen on stage at SF Music Tech. Um, and then we also, uh, Stained Glass Labs, which is a wearable computing incubator, is having their glazed conference the day awesome. before the summit. They're also having um, a hack day, so the best audio apps from there will show off at the summit. We've got folks like Yosin Chang, who's just brilliant, and she's going to do a breakdown of Google Glass. She built a, yeah. a Google Glass trombone, um, <laughs> and great. she's going to hopefully give all the sort of details of what sort of center, sensors there are, what sort of capabilities, and we can really hopefully get people moving forward on that. I mean, I'm not sure all the different tech stuff we're going to do, but we're definitely going to have metadata sessions. I mean, yeah. last time we had a phenomenal leap uh, – developer session where for an hour they just you know went over all the different capabilities and talked with people about how to build stuff on it i know i've yeah. got a couple of can't really announce but hardware partners who are out looking for uh you know developers you know they're like oh well, we can work with the big guys that's easy but yeah. help us find the small guys so we go out with a bunch of really interesting startups so it's really about everybody connecting and what i also realized when we started the show is it's easy to get like heads of business and you know heads of marketing and and stuff like that, but then they don't want you even to know who the developers are. Whereas yeah. if we bring the great developers, the business folks are going to come as well. So we're going to have a panel on like uh, you know issues around streaming huge quantities of music, and we've yeah. got like Alex Lee, who's the CTO of Smule. We've got you know Rusty Hodge of Soma FM. I mean, we, we we're really digging up the most interesting people we can find and that's why you know we love when people submit through the web form and say hey this is someone really interesting i love when i mean i'd love to hear who you think is are the most interesting people because that's who that's who we want to highlight yeah of course the folks who folks you know the the jeff prices or the you know alex fam from billboard folks yeah. like that of course everybody already knows and wants to meet but it's really a lot of these other folks who two years down the road, they're going to be like, you know, the Jay Siders or something, but, you know, they first show up on stage at our show and folks are like, oh, you know, it, it, the more connections and future business possibilities people come up with, that's what the SF Music Tech Summit's all about. Absolutely. That's great. And uh, it's on sfmusictech.com. So I would encourage yep. uh, listeners to go and check that out and uh, uh, check out uh, the speakers uh, lineup. Uh, uh, you're still taking suggestions for that? Uh, yeah, if we, you... we, we have a really interesting thing, which is that we've learned that 
a lot of the best suggestions come in at the last moment. Yeah. So we try to keep it a little loose. But for instance, we just got Narada Michael Walden, who's, yeah. you know, I mean, phenomenal. And, you know, Michael Bushel from uh, Iration and, and, and all these great folks are showing up. So, uh, yes, we, we are, though it's, it's competition is so fierce that never feel <laughs> bad if you submit someone. And I mean, and honestly, we always do everything we can to uh, have for di diversity. So if yeah. you're submitting, you know, women or folks who aren't white males, that we can always <laughs> yeah. use um, as much help with as, 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 you know, I mean, to make it the best show possible. But we've got Absolutely. folks like Michael Simon, you know, ahead of yeah. Harry Fox. And I mean, it, there, there's so many great people, you know, Kathy Baker from Sony. And I mean, just great, yeah. great people um, that I, I just have to pull it together. And this yeah. is so, so the answer is, is yes, we're looking for suggestions, but really, Let's shoot for the highest people ever. My joke is, it's like, yeah, I invite Paul McCartney every time. One time, <laughs> gonna, one time he might, you know, but, but if I don't invite him every time, he's not, he's definitely not coming. So <laughs> it's really like shoot for the moon, you know, shoot for the stars and maybe we'll hit the moon. Um, so yeah, we are open to suggestions, but uh, they really should be, you know, just great. But especially if we could find someone who's like, a technical monster who maybe left a huge company who's yeah. now CEO of some incredible startup that wants to launch at the summit. That's pretty good. Yeah, anything we it's can good news do. to have, okay. definitely. Okay. And uh, yeah, well, well, I'll actually put together, uh, I was just looking at the speaker's lineup now, and uh, there's quite a few people that I've interviewed on the show over yes, the last yes. year or two years. So Santa. I'll put a, a little a playlist together. And so great. Uh, I can awesome. share that on the site, and you can check it out. Uh, it's great. great, Brian, to have you on. And, uh, and I'll again, introduce it's... you to anyone else. If you want to interview anyone else who's on the list, I'm happy great. to connect you. Your show is very uh, chewy. Your yeah, show you. is <laughs> some of the more in-depth exploration of these yeah. issues that are out there, and it's really important to get uh, to, to hear what people have to say that really makes the whole – you know, industry tech, and yeah. you you do a bet. You I don't know anyone else who digs as deeply into the issues at this point as you. So yeah. we really appreciate <laughs> it. It's uh, you know it, it can be a pretty pretty full on at times, especially when it goes on to an hour and twenty minute of discussion. But <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but that that's the beauty of it. And uh, no, thanks thanks again for coming on. It's sfmusictech.com. And uh, thank of uh, thanks very much for listening to the DMT one to one. Check out digitalmusictrends.com for the weekly news show and the YouTube dot com slash digital music trends for all of the hundreds of videos that i've shot over the last uh, year because i think it's uh, a year next uh, week that we started doing the video show after four years of doing just the audio version so awesome. uh, thank you so much have a great week and until next time and now a quick word with the media law firm Sheridan's who sponsored this episode of the DMT 121. And I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir from uh, Sheridan's, uh, great to have you on. And uh, let's talk about uh, collection societies this week. So uh, what is the role of collection societies, societies in an artist's career? Right. Uh, first of all, I think it's important to explain what a collection society is. Um, so in this country, you're talking about on the recorded side, there's PPL. Uh, on the video side, there's VPL. And on the publishing side, the songwriting side, there's PRS for music. Uh, typically for an artist, it's really, um, in the earlier days of their careers, it's mainly PRS with a bit of PPL. Um, why are they important? Well, uh, in many cases, it's the first income that artists receive. So it's really important that when artists write songs, uh, record songs, and they're out there, that they're registered to a collection society. Otherwise, that income will just sit there. Um, if they're registered, then they'll get um, uh, royalty checks coming through from PRS and, and, and PPL. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, are there potential downsides to being registered to a society at all? It's interesting because, uh, you know, when you register, say, for example, to the PRS, you actually, as a songwriter, you assign certain rights to the PRS. So that uh, means that the PRS have the ability to offer blanket licenses, for example, when your music's used on TV, um, which means that you lose a bit of control around that. So uh, the downsides are primarily uh, deals which can get done without your control. Um, some... Uh, some uh, entities are looking for artists that aren't registered to collection societies to get around that whole issue. Uh, if artists enter into those types of deals, they've got to be sure that they're going to get paid the type of income that they'd expect. Generally, it's a good thing to register with collection societies. Absolutely. How important is data? I know that uh, the PRS, for example, encourages artists to register their songs as soon as possible, but do artists do that? 
Uh, a lot of artists don't. Uh, obviously, when a manager comes on board, that's one of the first things that they should be doing. Um, and you know, in terms of data, you know, d data in this day and age is what people get paid for. So if your song is registered with the Collection Society, the Collection Society can track its use, can get it monetized, and then pay out for, for, for the artist. That's great. Thank you. Until next week. Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show, and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.